In recent years, electric cars have been making more of a scene on roads around the world. In the United States, more electric cars than ever are nationwide, in cities and suburbs. However, what are the positive and negative geographical associations to these vehicles? Let's explore it. Historically, the United States has been a nation driven literally by cars. Many cities, particularly in the Midwest, South, and West, expanded rapidly thanks to automobiles and interstate highways. Up until the 1990s, virtually all cars were internal combustion vehicles. In 1997, GM introduced the GM EV1. It was one of the first modern electric cars to be mass-produced and leased to the public by a major automaker. It was a groundbreaking vehicle that gained attention for its innovative design and advanced electric powertrain technology. In 2003, GM made a controversial decision to discontinue the EV1 program and recall and crush all lease vehicles, citing high maintenance cost and the unavailability of parts as reasons for that decision. This move was met with criticism and protests from EV enthusiasts and environmental activists who believe GM should have continued developing and supporting electric vehicles. In reality, it was a big mistake, and six years later, GM declared bankruptcy due to the 2008 global recession. In 2012, GM emerged from bankruptcy, but by then, other car manufacturers were creating electric vehicles, including the new company Tesla, which introduced a Model S to the market. But the initial price for it was close to $100,000. After several years, Tesla produced the Model X, Model 3, and Model Y, with the last two being cheaper in price but still expensive for the average consumer. At the same time, other mainstream car manufacturers, including GM again, were coming out with electric models. As of 2023, around 5% of all vehicles on the road in the United States are fully electric. This number is projected to increase to over 50% by 2050. But, is the United States ready geographically for this transition? In this week's episode, we are going to review the geography behind electric vehicles in the United States. We will review how physical and human geography is connected to electric vehicles by explaining the positives and negatives of both. After that, we'll examine if the United States will be capable to handle a fully electric vehicle society. Before we begin, if you enjoy learning about geography and earth science, please subscribe to my channel, Our World, Our Planet, Our Home, to view more videos like this. Let's get started. Although electric vehicles do have their strengths, there are negative geographical limitations to them, as we'll discuss now. A major one is range anxiety. Range anxiety is nervousness about running out of battery when traveling. As of today, the average range for an electric car is around 250 miles, which isn't bad, but is far behind some gasoline power vehicles, usually those with good fuel economies and large fuel tanks. Also, the 250 mile range is usually the number specified under ideal conditions so many electric vehicles may get far less miles. Some areas of the United States, especially less urbanized settings, may not have adequate charging networks, which can be problematic when traveling to these locales, leading to concerns about running out of battery power during long trips. This can deter potential EV buyers, particularly those who live in rural regions, and the U.S. has numerous remote areas. A limitation related to range is cold weather. In regions where cold weather is common, especially in the northern tier of the U.S., range can be significantly reduced for electric vehicles. For someone living in rural Montana, which has a very limited charging network in very cold winters, an electric vehicle is not feasible. Another limitation is economic factors, including affordability. Electric vehicles, although becoming more affordable over time, still tend to have a higher upfront cost than traditional gasoline power vehicles. The cheapest electric car on the market now is a Chevy Bolt, a small GM vehicle starting at $26,500. But this is a base model with limited features. A Bolt fully loaded goes for over $30,000. Many other EVs are way more expensive. This cost barrier can be a significant limitation, especially for low-income individuals who may struggle to access financial incentives and tax credits that make EVs more affordable. And, if a customer wants to pay a loan each month, the average interest rate is nearly 7%, making the car more expensive. 
The next factor is not a limitation, but rather a negative, and that's energy sources associated with charging. While electric vehicles are cleaner in terms of no tailpipe emissions, their environmental impact depends on the source of electricity. In regions where electricity generation relies heavily on coal and other fossil fuels, the overall benefit of EVs in reducing emissions may be diminished. In the U.S., 59% of all electricity still comes from fossil fuels, especially coal and natural gas. Transitioning to a cleaner energy source is vital for maximizing the environmental benefits of electric vehicles. Now let's head on to the positive geographical attributes of electric vehicles. One positive is associated with their effectiveness in urban metropolitan areas. 80% of the U.S. population is considered urbanized, accounting for around 270 million people. In densely populated areas, such as ones like New York and northern New Jersey, Los Angeles, Chicago, Miami, and Houston, electric vehicles are more popular. This is because of the availability of charging stations, such as at shopping centers, near street parking in cities, stadiums, and hotels. By having available chargers, this decreases range anxiety and decreases the chance of dead batteries. And environmentally, since electric vehicles generate no emissions, it may ultimately reduce urban air pollution such as smog. Another positive that's economical is possible job growth from the growing electric vehicle sector. The manufacturing and development of EVs and their components have the potential to create jobs and stimulate local economies. Companies like Tesla, General Motors, and Ford are investing heavily in EV production, generating employment in areas with manufacturing facilities. With that being said, if there is job growth within this sector, GDPs in the United States as well as within states and per capita incomes will increase. A third positive factor is added incentives from governmental agencies. Right now, consumers making under $150,000 a year can receive a $7,500 tax credit for a car less than $55,000 and an SV less than $80,000. This is also good until 2032. Many states also give tax credits between $2,000 and nearly $10,000, which is lucrative for potential buyers. So, is the United States ready for a fully electric vehicle society? It's a mixed bag. The first thing that's complex is a nationwide charging network. As of now, the only car manufacturer that has a well-developed charging network is Tesla, which has 1,847 supercharger locations. But, nearly all of these chargers are exclusively for Teslas only, meaning other manufacturers of electric vehicles can't use them. However, this is slowly changing as Tesla said they're allowing non-Teslas to use the network, but these others may need special adapters to do so. Other than these chargers, the general network is growing, but possibly not as fast as the electric vehicle market. If this happens, there may be significantly more electric vehicles on the road than available chargers. Another thing is charging times. Although they are improving, it takes 10 times longer to charge an electric vehicle than it does for a gasoline-powered one. For someone in a hurry, this may be problematic. With charging times and possibly more electric commercial vehicles, such as tractor-trailers, this can slow down the movement of goods throughout the nation, thus increasing prices. With time, electric vehicle batteries start to deteriorate, and eventually, they'll need to be replaced. The lifespan of the average battery is 10 to 20 years, but can be reduced under certain conditions such as hot and cold weather. If outside the warranty, the battery can cost thousands of dollars. However, keep in mind that general maintenance and repairs for gasoline-powered vehicles can cost thousands of dollars over many years. Meteorologically, as said before, electric vehicles don't fare well in cold conditions. When temperatures drop to 32 degrees, an electric vehicle may lose 20% of its range, and at 20 degrees, upwards of 40%. Much of the interior United States has wintertime temperatures that are this low. Charging electric vehicles in colder weather is also slower, which has something that was already slow in the first place. As of today, only an electric vehicle in states such as Montana, the Dakotas, Wyoming, Idaho, and Alaska is not practical unless that person lives in a densely populated community. And finally, some Americans are reluctant to buy an electric vehicle for purposes related to the limitations that were discussed and also that are associated with human geographical factors such as economics and geopolitics. Economically, individuals may not want to make the initial purchase for an electric vehicle, let alone a normal vehicle, due to the increase in the MSRP of a vehicle which averages $48,000.
Geopolitically, certain individuals may not want to buy an electric vehicle due just to their political affiliation. After all, politics on a whole is a very complicated subject matter. Through the 21st century, we will see a growing electric vehicle market, whether it's by choice or mandated. Several states such as California, New York, New Jersey, Oregon, and Washington are mandating that all vehicles in the next 10 to 20 years must be electric. Whether this will happen or is even possible is questionable. The geographic limitations must be addressed because otherwise the United States will be incredibly unprepared for the shift. The states that are mandating electric vehicles tend to be better prepared, such as California, which has the largest charging network of any state. The use of fossil fuels is still needed today to run the United States and the world, but we can slowly transition to a more sustainable society in the coming decades. Do you think that the United States can support a fully electric vehicle society? Please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much again for watching this week's episode. Be sure to tune in every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for full-length episodes and every Monday and Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for short videos. Until next time!